we have been supporting people with real-time innovation sessions in which we're using all of this CAD software, all of these remarkable, relatively speaking, brand new technologies like 3D printing and laser cutting and, and, and all these electronics that are so easy to incorporate these days um, to be inventing products and building them and iterating and building like you know dozens of them you know within a day sometimes so yeah, that's great yeah, yeah i mean we we have brought the product life cycle from years to days yeah. um yeah. you know factors of a hundred um you know faster boom what's up everyone welcome to simulation i'm your host alan sakyan very excited to be in Boston, Massachusetts still. We are at GSV Labs, Co-Create X's East Coast headquarters. We are gonna be talking about real-time innovation. We have Matt Cameron joining us on the show. What's up? Hey, thank you so much for uh, having me, Alan. I really appreciate it. I can't believe that eight years ago or something like that, we were at the University of Minnesota together. Yeah. And now we're both adults doing our uh, our own projects in the world it's super cool that yeah. that this reconnection is happening after such a long period of time flies <laughs> time flies eight years wow we've so done a much, lot <laughs> so much more immature so much a, a better world view now all yeah this, all this yeah. type of stuff um, for those that don't know max background he's the co-founder and president of co-create x which is helping realize the full creative potential of people's by strengthening communities, processes, and productivity worldwide. Mm -hmm. And you can find CoCreateX's link below, CoCreateX.com, as well as their Instagram, their Twitter, their Facebook group, and Max LinkedIn profile link. Mm -hmm. So let's start things off with our question that we love asking. We find ourselves as stewards of Earth. What is your current take on the state of humanity? State of humanity, wow. Well. I think that this is the most incredible time to be alive by far. Uh, this, it, it is a magical time to be alive. We have the freedom to travel anywhere in the world you know, within like 24 hours. I mean, it, it, is, it is remarkable the freedom and the openness and the ability to express ourselves. Like this is, this is the best time in human history ever. It's the safest. Um, and I think it's only gonna get better. We've, we've seen We've seen so many good and amazing productivity um, tools and transportation is transforming, trade, and, and it, it's a magical time to be alive. In, the, in this, this state of humanity, I, I am so fortunate I got to experience having a, a no phone and a very small little phone that could just do text messages that you know we all like all my friends, you know, did too many text messages and our, our bills went up through the roof and our parents, you know, took our phones away to the point where we are doing like virtual reality. We have virtual reality, you know, machines in our pockets powered by data centers everywhere in the world. Like this is magical. I, I oh my goodness. It's, it's a miracle where we are right now. <laughs> yeah, I love your, your, your degree of optimism and your degree of confidence in progress and in um, creativity yeah. being uh, maximized mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm really happy to unpack that with you because you got this real-time innovation edge to you and mm -hmm. your organizations and the people that you impact around the world. Mm -hmm. So let's jump into the journey. So you're born in Madison in Wisconsin, then you moved to Minnesota mm -hmm. when you were seven. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you went through the University of Minnesota. Tell us about the these inputs, these stimuli that cause you to become who you are. Your family, friends, you said were really important. Mm -hmm. You had three older siblings, mm -hmm. sports, mm -hmm. and then of course your outlook on the desire to improve life and make it more efficient, productive. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So you know, I, f I feel incredibly fortunate because I was always around a, a lot of my peers who are also interested in building stuff and improving things and and. Uh, I think we were we were raised in a very unique, interesting time that like we were exposed to so many ideas growing up that were so well thought out. Um, you know, these the first, you know, movies and videos and and things that T V shows and things that influenced us were, were very, you know, thought out and well funded, which I think is 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 it's an interesting way to kind of grow and develop ideas. Whereas today it's very, very quick and easy to be posting stuff. 
um, w which is also very good in many, many different ways. But um, I ended up uh, studying physics at the University of Minnesota um, and was exposed to a lot of really unique product design activities and just an understanding of, of the world and physical properties that, that was inspiring. Um, I chose physics because it was like the most difficult thing that I took in high school and I was like, I need to master this. And you know, four years later with a physics degree, you know, I do not believe that I have mastered it by any means. Mm -hmm. um, I certainly learned a lot and uh, had a lot of fun and struggled greatly, but um, you know, it was, it was the desire for, for knowledge and the desire for truth that uh, was, was inspiring. And, and as I, I learned more and I, I was introduced to different technologies, um, I, I think I was able to, to unload some of my creative potential using 3D printing and other technologies that, that it, it felt as though I was skydiving with a world full of ideas that could be realized, you know, before I hit the ground. Um, and uh, so that, that is definitely, you know, 3D printing and the physics education has certainly played a giant part in who I am today. Um, I feel very fortunate to have uh, you know, siblings who are in science and, uh, and technology and, and business um, uh, and just, just a friend group in general that, um, you know, is, is doing very, very interesting and unique things, y yourself included. You um, too. You know, yeah. it's, it's inspiring. And I, th I think, I mean, it's, it's a cliche thing to say, but hanging around with people who are productive and who are always doing positive things and pursuing something that, that is hopefully their own passion is inspiring greatly and can lead everybody you know, to the next level of their own personal accomplishment, which is hopefully tied to their happiness. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the importance of us uh, identifying what we, our true self is, mm -hmm. finds the most meaning in life and setting that as a goal and having mentors and the influences that help us get there mm -hmm. um, for every mind that's born into the world, so critical. So cool. And that's what, you know, that's a lot, in a lot of ways what you're building with Co-Create X. And I want to hit on another thing that you said, which was that it was kind of this, you're, you're, when you're in physics at the U of M and you're also playing around with the 3D printing tools, you're really starting to realize the full potential of what it's like to, to think of an idea mm -hmm. and then make it in the world, like you said, by the time you're done skydiving before mm -hmm. you've hit the ground, you've yeah. already made it in <laughs> yeah. the physical world. Yeah, exactly. And that to you is a major light bulb, yeah? Oh yeah. And then tell, tell, so tell me about how that then ended up um, catalyzing. I want to actually, even before we get to ZMOC and how that catalyzed that, mm -hmm. tell us about this perspective that you have with looking around you and seeing how do I improve life? How do I make the quality of everything around me and other people mm -hmm. better? Yeah, uh, great question. Um, I think that one important thing is to not get intimidated by trying to solve the biggest problem right away. It, it's, it's easy to think that even improving something very small is just not worth your time, but the ability to learn from building something small and, and reasonable is so important. So, for example, when I was first introduced to 3D printing, I took an incredible class at the University of Minnesota um, called Toy Product Design with uh, Barry Kedjewitz. It was, it was my first experience of, of product design and uh, using 3D printing to make an idea that we had just thought up a reality within 24 hours. I mean, this was, this was magic. I had never seen anything like this. This is plastic like you'd see in a Lego set. You know, ABS plastic that's really strong. You know, being able to, to think of an idea and create it right away. So. Our, our challenge was to create a, a marble run or be able to, to use recycled materials like cans and boards and boxes to create an intricate marble run to kind of reuse stuff that's in the recycling right away for toy purposes. So we built a bunch of connectors and we designed connectors c to connect cans together, boxes together, um, clips together to make these really intricate marble runs. and. Uh, it, 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 we weren't solving we weren't solving global big problems with that, but we were learning the skills that when you implement for long enough can actually make a big difference. 
like compound interest on a yes. in a bank account. Ten percent every year doesn't look very big after that first year or second year, but ten years down the line, twenty years down the line, you know, we're we're young. A hundred years down the line, you know, who 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 knows how long we're gonna last, but uh, this stuff really, really builds up. That's a super important piece of advice that we can't get overwhelmed by the mm -hmm. by the massive challenges that we have to all collectively tackle. Mm -hmm. And we also have to know the butterfly effect that we can catalyze on a different part of the world just through a simple thing like a smile, those massive dominoes that can go and, and yes. make impact. And then also, I like how you said it is like a compound interest. When you do learn programming or when you do learn engineering or uh, designing in CAD mm -hmm. and actually 3D printing something immediately, when you learn these processes, it makes you a more well-rounded person going into every single industry, entrepreneur, artist application you do after that yep. point in time. Mm -hmm. So then the, the this toy product design class, the physics, the 3D printing, all of it tied you into even starting your first company. And this company, yeah. Zmock. Mm -hmm. So you were doing, uh, you've been doing it seven years now. That's catting for companies, design engineering firm, and packaging design now. So teach us mm -hmm. about Zmock. Yeah, so um, me and my, my friends in college started Zmock to actually turn a fireplace into a dancing stereo. So the flames dance to music and it's, it's really incredible. It's actually based on a, a science experiment called the Rubens tube uh, that was developed by a physicist in the you know, early 20th century. Um, and it's, uh, it's as simple as taking a tube, drilling some holes into it, putting a propane connection on one end and a speaker to the other end. That's right. And this, the compression and contraction of sound waves depending on whatever song that you do, will actually make the, the, uh, the flames bounce up and down. So we were like, why hasn't anybody made a sweet fireplace like this? They, they build these giant hotels with these linear fireplaces and none of them dance to music. So we pursued that, you know, we, we learned very quickly how expensive getting um, UL testing, or, you know, bomb proofing some of these things is, right? It's very important to make sure that these are safe and make sure you have the, uh, the proper, um, insurance for, for something that's dealing with fire and you know closed containers. Um, so we, we made a lot of progress. We actually invented a couple ways that really solved some giant, giant problems of this. Uh, but at this time, you know, I was just graduating. I was, I was really pursuing my passion, which is, is 3D printing and, and, and just building stuff. Um, and uh, ended up getting a job at, at Stratasys, which is the world's largest 3D printing business at the time. Um, and and that project kind of fell at the wayside. Uh, however, I do, you know, if anybody's watching this and they want a cool project to do, please do that. Um, or I'm going to do it at some point because it's still so awesome and I want to see my uh, fireplace dance music someday. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It'd be great in San Francisco with, with you, I'm sure. Minnesota, it just gets too cold for, like, fireplaces, I think. <laughs> ran, in, ran into some, some outdoor issues with the weather out, out in the north. Yeah. There's, and this is another one of those things where you're looking at something, you're like, how do we make it more exciting, more engaging, entertaining, these types mm -hmm. of things. Um, and then, so since then, it's been doing a lot of packaging design, design and engin engineering and whatnot. But you also took that job three years with Stratasys, um, applications engineer, manufacturing mm -hmm. thousands of parts, which also led you to doing um, an adjunct professing role at the University of Minnesota, mm -hmm. where it would, you actually taught the first 3D printing class there. Yeah, I, I had a, a remarkable opportunity while I was working at Stratasys. I was an applications engineer, which, in in my experience, was was perfect. We we learned about all of the different ways that things are made: injection molding, blow molding, casting, forming, carving, all, all these different manufacturing methods and where 3D printing fits in the life cycle of these traditional processes. So, so we learned a lot, a, a lot of manufacturing methods and, and how to design for those, those manufacturing methods using the, the new and improved freedom that comes with 3D printing. And so from there, uh, I had an opportunity. I, I met a gentleman who was, a f who, uh, was one of the, uh, I think he was a faculty director at the College of Continuing Education, whose name was also Mac. 
and like we just connected right away because our both our names were Mac and like I haven't met a Mac in a while. So anyways, like it, it just like worked out really well. Um, we collaborated on a syllabus and implemented a really sweet program at the University of Minnesota um, while I was working at Stratasys to introduce people to all of these new methods. Um, and we actually did something that I believe fully in, which is give somebody the power to pursue their passion and the tools to pursue it quickly and just let people enjoy, let people embrace what it is that they want to do. That's, that's where you get the best out of people. You get the most out of someone when they're doing something that they love to do, and these tools are making it quite easy to, to, to do that. Yeah, it's, it's powerful when you put it in that perspective because when someone's in that state of creative flow where they're finding the most meaning in what they're doing on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, the, pr the productive output is just unrivaled compared to anything else that someone's doing. And tools like 3D printing and like the class you were teaching were mm -hmm. empowering people to be able to, to creatively flourish like that. Mm -hmm. So you also, I want, let's teach about this. Uh, let's have you teach about this on the way to CoCreateX. There's dozens of ways to do 3D printing. And mm -hmm. 3D printing and additive manufacturing are synonymous. Yep. Okay, and then third, but this is 30 years old. Most people were, don't, were thinking like, oh, this is brand new. It's 30 years old. Yep. And that this is layering materials and building new shapes, building new lattice structures, mm -hmm. building new cooling channels, bending these materials. Yeah. This is fascinating. Yeah, it's it's so cool. And I, I really inspire uh, anybody who's interested in getting into 3D printing, uh, first start with learning CAD software, computer-aided design software, um, or other methods to convert your ideas into a digital file. Because once it's converted into a digital file, you have the freedom to manufacture it in many different methods. But 3D printing in general is a uh, was first called additive manufacturing because instead of kind of the traditional subtractive manufacturing where you take a big block of steel and you mill it down or you know, it could be any number of materials and you subtract the material. This is a, uh, a method to actually start with just the material that you need and build it layer upon layer. Um, so in essence, I mean, in general, it's considered a more efficient way to do stuff. Um, you don't need a big block of material, you don't need to throw away as much material, but what also happens is you get design freedom that you can just build stuff that subtractive manufacturing can't, can't get away from. So about 10 different ways to do this. You can do metals, you can do foods, you can 3D print um, uh, different bioplastics and uh, you know, structures and silicones that can be used for anything from um, new engine parts to organs, to plastic pieces, to toys, um, really a lot of freedom and uh, more and more applications coming out any, any given day, honestly, um, of this. So yeah, ho hopefully that was a That's good- great. <laughs> that yeah. was a kind That's of a great. good understanding of it's something so it is. It's so true that with the subtractive, there's how do you get into the inner parts, like you said, with yeah. additive, you can make whatever insides you want more easily. Yep. Also, um, the applications, like you said, everything from microvasculature and organs all the way to the aerospace and automotive parts. And yeah. this is f application endless. I love it. Yeah, and it's so accessible. I. I I can teach somebody how to 3D print and design something that they have in their head in 10 minutes. Yeah, that's profound. Boom. That's profound. You could be doing it yourself in 10 minutes. 10 minutes. If there's a 3D printer right there and Wi-Fi connection, we're good. Alan, we're, we're, good. we're making you some stuff. And now, okay, <laughs> on, I love it. On the software side of things, um, okay, so CAD, so computer-aided design, mm -hmm. um, what are the best tools that w someone could learn in, you know, in that 10 minute period where they could realize the way that they want to design something and have it and have mm -hmm. it printed. Yeah. So just recently with this cloud computing boom, um, a lot of these, these softwares have gone into the cloud, which means that you can just use them on a traditional browser, whether it be Google Chrome or um, Firefox or Opera or Safari. Um, and th this is very unique because these are very high in intensive um, programs in terms of the hardware that's needed to um, run these things. So typically I'll have somebody start with a either a digital sculpting program in which you pretty much start with like a ball of clay 
a digital ball of clay and you like grab it and you form it and you smooth it and you can ultimately create something that's very organic shape like a face or a body mm. um, and a good great one for that is called sculpt gl uh, i usually just google search sculpt gl it's it's the first thing that pops cool. up you don't have to sign up for an account you should totally check it out it's really awesome nice. you can just start designing um, or there's one that's called Tinkercad, which is a little bit closer to engineering um, drawings, but it, it allows you to, to uh, take, take blocks like in Minecraft or circles or spheres or shapes and very quickly create 3D geometry from it. Yes. Um, and, then, and then you can save it as a, as a STL file or as an additive manufacturing file or any number of the formats. Um, and then right when you get there, you're good to go. Um, it becomes very easy to make it from there. One step kind of further, which is uh, engineering drawings, uh, kind of some of the big players in the industry are Onshape, which is, is my personal favorite at this time, um, and Fusion 360, which is also mm -hmm. an incredible um, software. Both, I believe, have free options for entrepreneurs and, and for edu educators and uh, people in school. Um, and then there's, there's SolidWorks and Katia, and the, there's a bunch of other big, intensive uh, softwares. Um, I could talk for a while about softwares. There, there's, there's you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, even more, so like, you know, topology optimization yes, and being yes. able to incorporate stuff like end topology. But um, with, with that, that pot of software, you know, getting good at that is like getting good at code 25 years ago, I mean, this, this is gonna blow up and it's yeah. gonna be exciting. And we're gonna see improvements across the board. Um, there is an, you know, an hour of code. There are all these code pushing programs because there's big money in it. Um, this CAD is like coming soon. I agree. Yeah, yeah. get good at CAD is, is a, yeah. you know, one, get one thing. Get good at CAD, yeah. yeah. So it's like learn to code, learn to CAD you know, learn to social emotional, <laughs> like these things mm -hmm, are, yeah, mm -hmm. that help with, you know, business and relationships rapport. Um, yeah. Interesting, so the combination of kind of like those three things are a massive part of our future. Yeah. You, you, you indicated a couple things there that I thought was so important. One of them being that the processing capacity that was necessary on a piece of hardware mm -hmm. is, you know, you, now you can do it in browsers because we're doing it via cloud compute, which is mm -hmm. fantastic. So cool. And then also that, you know, things like a Sculpt GL or a Tinkercad are kind of more of like these basic, more fundamental uh, mm -hmm. ones. And then all the way up to the harder ones, the you know, Fusion 360 and SolidWorks yep. and, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and topology, et cetera. So, there's, there's that gradient level for expertise which is available. So go and get tinkering. That's such a good point is go and get tinkering as soon as possible. Get used to um, playing around with it and actually go and actually take that file and go print it to see it come alive right away. That's so awesome. I yeah, it's, it's so cool. It's so empowering. And when I was teaching a, a class uh, with a gentleman named Derek Mathers at the University of Minnesota, he, he would like to tell the analogy like 3D printing your first part that you designed yourself is like going scuba diving for the first time and taking that first breath underwater where just a new world opens. Mm -hmm. That's really, that's really well said. <laughs> um, yeah, 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 my, my, I had so many other <laughs> good analogies come up too. Um, yeah. uh, let's hit co-create X, real time innovation sessions. Um, you f the full, maximizing the full creative potential of people in one of the most accelerated product design fashions mm -hmm. is beautiful. Like you said, it's like when you scuba dive for the first time, when you take an airplane for the first time, when you go across the world, when you fall in love the first time, all these types of things is mm -hmm. like, how can you realize that? idea and how do you have a, a company like co-create x that actually does that and there's so many components of this let's start from the from the um highest level perspective on this real-time innovation yeah so so co-create x we started this uh, officially about three years ago and the the vision is to help people make a living by being who they are and doing what they love which is like how do we help innovators support their passions and be as successful as we can possibly make them um, we help tap the power of communities to help people realize their creative dreams. Um, and my, my co-founder, uh, Nick Pauly, loves to say that a tapping the community is, is so interesting because the more you tap into the community, a community in general, 
the stronger it grows, right? It is a resource that when you tap into it, it grows stronger mm -hmm. as opposed to tapping into a mine where you mine out the materials and it becomes less, you know, less materials in there. The community actually grows stronger. stronger yeah. So we have been supporting people with real time innovation sessions in which we're using all of this CAD software, all of these remarkable, relatively speaking, brand new technologies like 3D printing and laser cutting and, and, and all these electronics that are so easy to incorporate these days um, to be inventing products and building them and iterating and building like you know dozens of them you know within a day sometimes so yeah, that's great yeah, yeah i mean we we have brought the product life cycle from years to days yeah, um yeah. you know factors of a hundred um you know faster yeah, yeah. and it, it certainly it, it requires a lot of a lot of practice and expertise but also just you know, just, just doing it, just getting into uh, the rhythm, you know, not worrying about what can't be done, but instead just consistently like, you know, push and solve those small problems, right? Break everything into small problems and work, you know, as fast and, uh, you know, as rapid as you possibly can. Oh my goodness, this is so great. So you, so you take, <laughs> so, like such a good way to put it is that when you tap into the community, it grows stronger. That's yeah. such a good way to put it. So there's, you know, so Co-Create X has its own, uh, also its own community of, of builders, uh, engineers, designers, ops people, executors of all sorts, mm -hmm. as well as is working with inspiring communities around the world to also come up with helping with the execution of ideas of people in those areas. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of reach out to either, you know, co-create X or co-create X can also kind of pair you with people in the local communities that you're at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, and just one, one more thing about that is there in recent years, there has been a big influx in maker spaces. Some call them fab labs. Yeah. There's a huge number of names for what you would call a place that you can go and build stuff. These are popping up at schools. These are popping up in um, rural areas, down in cities. There are places to make things, but the business models that are associated with these places have made them very difficult to be sustainable. So Co-Create X is, is developing a platform and has already developed a good portion of the platform um, and, and a culture that's going to make maker spaces around the world truly thrive on what it is that they have access to, which is the ability to turn the community in which that maker space is in those ideas into reality to solve those problems very fast. So we've, we've developed a uh, distributed social network that you know, captures generosity within these places. Yes. Um, we've developed a, an intellectual property blockchain application that allows us to quickly and immutably uh, gather the information um, that, that are, that's generated there. And we've, we've built kind of a structure and a process for people to host these real-time innovation sessions and actually be inventing stuff. Um, I, ideas are so important. And yes. uh, the, the patent system and just the ideas in general, it, it just needs to be improved. And uh, because we can do these things so fast, when I say these things, I mean build products or take that idea in your head and put it in your hand in a couple hours. Uh, it, is, it is becoming more and more important to, to be able to kind of understand and, and feel comfortable communicating that idea and sharing that idea with others. So that's, that's really where we're, we're trying, to, trying to go. And, and we have a, a bus that we you know, have turned into a makerspace. So cool. yeah. um, we have a house that we have a makerspace, really where we, we did a lot of this uh, initial, just we, a lot of this initial brainstorming of like, okay, well, you know, what's going on here, right? We can't keep up with the Joneses. We'll never get the biggest, baddest laser cutter. And right when we get it, there's another one that comes out. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and so we've developed these, these products and this culture that, that we're growing and building. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 when, you, when you take uh, someone that, in that, that so much needs the just one-on-one -on -one mentorship and guidance of 
I have an idea, how do I realize it? And then there's a community around them that mm -hmm. helps them do a real-time innovation session. And just like that, the idea is iterated on a step further and, mm -hmm. then, and then physically in their hand or um, a step into the further into the world is just so critical. Um, and the execution is such, it's the most important than 99% of it. Uh, ideas are everywhere all the time and if we mm -hmm. can actually realize them more fully into our world faster um, and build community in the meanwhile, that's so crucial. Now, I want to hit on a couple things as well. Um, one of the things that I like potentially um, uh, referencing quite a bit is this edge of knowledge. So we have this massive edge of knowledge for civilization mm, and we find so many different scientists, engineers, people that are at this, the edge, and then artists, entrepreneurs. And so when we do things like Co-Create X, it helps us democratize the uh, the ID ideation process to create as well as then mm -hmm. further push that edge and open up more people to be able to creatively go and explore there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I love the analogy of of we're in this this sphere that is ever growing of knowledge and it, and expanding and people are bouncing into the edge and pushing it out a little bit yes. and it, it grows in general. Yeah. I, I think it's so so interesting and it's it's accelerating it's very much going way faster <laughs> than it was and there's a number of reasons reasons why including the software that's making this whole whole yeah. world uh yeah software, tick. software yeah. is eating the world <laughs> yeah yeah it's making the world tick um Okay, teach us, you know, you, you talked on the IP blockchain, I wanna, we'll save that for laf right after the mobile innovation bus. You wanna scale that, I like that idea. You're, dri you're driving around a bus that has a lot of 3D printing technology in mm -hmm. it that kind of gets kids and young adults in and excited about, about actually executing ideas and you're driving that around the country. Yeah, it's, <laughs> we're like the new age rock star, except for we're not like singing concerts, we're going and inventing stuff for people. It's, it's wild. And I encourage everybody to tag along. We, we stop, stop by lots of cities, so we might be coming by. And Co making Co more buses. X bus. Yeah. yeah. Co-create X bus. Yes. Yeah. CCX yeah. bus. Yeah. CCX Slow bus. Rat. And then, um, very good. So more buses, more cities, stopping more cities, potentially around the world as well, having buses around the world, mm -hmm. democratizing the technology further in the most rural parts, inspiring more people to, yeah. to build. Mm -hmm. And then, the IP blockchain also related, especially to like the edge of knowledge is very interesting. You mentioned patents as well earlier. We kind of prop people up on a pedestal a lot as an individual, like a Nobel laureate or the founder of a company or whatever. But then there's like thousands of people that were involved in that physics uh, edge push or the uh, operations push at a company to get something done. So mm -hmm. when you take something like um, two people having an innovation session, like if Mac and I were to go and do an innovation session on a drone right now, mm -hmm. on one, a drone application, mm -hmm. and then we were to literally put that on the Co-Create X's blockchain and say that Mac and Alan had this session, it's physically there mm -hmm. on a ledger that's mm -hmm. decentralized, and boom, just like that, now we have, now we have a, a, an ongoing ledger of our innovation sessions. Yeah, exactly, we, we will have a, a hash that will last essentially forever uh, associated directly with that information that we put in there. And uh, what's really cool about the CoCredX blockchain is that it is to inter interact with it, it is as easy as sending an email. All you have to do is send an email to blockchain at cocreatex.com with the subject line as what it is that you're sharing and an attachment and it will immediately log that into our blockchain. I think it takes about 26 seconds and send you back the hash and the document that has been hashed into the blockchain so cool. um, with the timestamp and everything. So, we, so cool. we think we have the easiest way to, to interact with the blockchain that we've ever seen at least. So you and I update maybe our, our CAD design and then we would submit that in. And so, Send the email. and then eventually it gets so integrated that it just automatically um, takes that file and stores it on the CoCreateX blockchain so that it's an automatic, integrative, in, in, iterative and innovative um, part, part of our creative processes. Exactly, and, and we've also incorporated um, a way to just, just quickly create a non-disclosure agreement and um, from that, because a, a lot of times people just, they just wanna share their ideas with somebody who's gonna be helpful 
for them, but they're, they don't want to share it without somebody signing a non-disclosure agreement. And so we want to make that easier as well. Um, and we don't, we don't give legal advice. Uh, we work with, with lawyers and, and patent agents who help out with that stuff. But uh, this is, at the very least, we're taking a step in the right direction um, and, and practicing what this is ultimately going to look like as more and more of these innovations, real-time innovation sessions happen around the world. Yeah, you have a cool video about uh, help and thank you as well, which I thought was very profound because gratitude um, has shown over and over again to, to increase amounts of meaning and purpose and fulfillment and awe and, and happiness uh, in life. Mm -hmm. And, and to, to be able to do something like uh, push a help and thank you culture around the world is so critical. <laughs> yeah, well, thank, thank you so much. The, we found that some of the most valuable things that happened in our, in our makerspace when we had it was when somebody gave a thank you note. Uh, these, there, it's just, it just feels really good. And there's not, there's not a lot of bad stuff that happens when, you know, somebody gives somebody a thank you note and just says, thank you for helping me out. That was, that was really helped me complete the project you know, patent the invention, uh, you know, do something that I wanted to do. So we decided that we're going to start really incorporating that into our culture and really inspiring people to collaborate and celebrate the good things, the, the things that, you know, need celebration. So we, we applaud all those who are helping each other with projects and saying thank you. And uh, if you're so inspired, you can say thank you to somebody who's helped you out with your project on cocreatex.com and it's uh it is it is the fundamental the baseline culture of of a a successful and happy community ah <sighs> yeah you make Feels me good. yeah yeah you make <laughs> me feel great when you talk about community yes. and creativity and thank you and gratitude mm -hmm. right these things coming together are our future in so many ways so mm -hmm. yeah we we love what you're doing and i want to want to ask you the couple uh, simulation questions on the way out of the show. We cover everything fairly well? I think so, yeah. I think so? Yeah, yeah. I think so too. Good, good. Yeah. All right, all right. So we'll ask you first, are we in a simulation? I think we're building the simulation right now. I think we're the first. Bada bang. We may see in our lifetime. I just watched a cool video in VR. I was a uh, I was in the uh, the dinosaur dinosaur land. So yeah, I think that I think that we are the first. I think we're building the simulation right now. You think this is base reality, and we're building the first simulation? I think this is base reality. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Let's build it. <laughs> Prove me wrong. No. <laughs> we'll poke. Yeah. Scientific probe, try and yeah, exactly. see if this is the base or not first. Yeah. yeah, but we, but yeah, you're right. The the tech has advanced so much. It's it's for sure going in the direction of making more simulations. There's so it's many good discoveries to make. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a great conversation to have, uh, but because sometimes life feels like a simulation. Yeah, yeah, like we met eight years ago, yeah. and here we are now. Yeah, again, exactly. Yeah, talking like. Enjoy, enjoying enjoying life in Boston with the uh, the Paramount in the background at GSP right. Labs. That's right. That's yes. Right. Yeah. It's like it was meant to be. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> no kidding. And also the 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 full realization of people's creativity is a critical part of the process, and we're leveling up as we create more. Yeah. We level up, we gain more experience points. Mm -hmm. We can log that on a ledger along the way. That's a great way of... Yeah, uh, everybody's perspective is incredibly important to solve the problem. And everybody has, has something that I'm sure that they would love, love to see solved. And we are empowered today to, to help people do that and to do it ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. at unprecedented rates. And it's, it's really time to democratize the future more and give people more of the tools to access to do so. And then what do you think is the most beautiful thing in the world? My girlfriend. It's definitely the most beautiful thing in the world. But, it, but in terms of science and technology and humanity, I, I think 
that seeing someone pursue their passion, empowering somebody to pursue their passion, you know, for their own personal purpose is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in this world. That's that's rad. Yeah, yeah. That lighting that helping helping light the fire under someone's creative potential. Yeah. Hey, I'm helping. Hopefully, I'm helping you do that yeah. as well right now, Alan. You you, are, you absolutely create are. content. Yeah. Get this. Make make magic and hopefully hopefully inspire some people. Yeah, yeah. And it's 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 you're 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 so so right that that's one of the most profoundly beautiful things you see someone that has their own aha mm -hmm. i have the full potential to build what i care about mm -hmm. and build the future together mm -hmm. as that global community mm -hmm. find my role in the game together yeah and find my character role wow what the, the profound feeling that that catalyzes yeah, yeah. it's it's incredible and it's it's unfortunate that so many people don't have the opportunity to pursue their passion with with the majority of their time yeah. and with with automation and with the the technology is making it easier and easier to do so but i i have been you know fully pursuing my passion for just a couple years and it is i i love going to work every day Me you too. know everything is is exciting and if you don't feel like that I encourage you to to really try or reach out to the Co-Create X community or or yeah. anybody to help um, yeah. so there, there are people out there willing to willing to help you pursue that passion because we know it's going to be your best work that you'll ever create in life is is what you know you you know you got to do within a question that we like asking is why have we built a civilization where people do what they don't love every single day? So, yeah. then, so then it's about the new code deployments that make it easier for the kids when they're born into the world to be able to do what they love every single day without having to do things that they don't love. And mm -hmm. then also, like you said, reach out to CodeCreateX, reach out to Simulation, mm -hmm. you know, simulationseries at gmail.com yeah. and reach out to us because we'll love to pair you with the you know, CodeCreateX's Facebook group or any of the people we featured on the show that are at the edge of their fields so you can get going on building and iterating um, and fulfilling your, your fullest into the world. Mac. Holy cow, what an awesome conversation together. Thank you so much for Thank you so much, show. Alan. Again, much appreciated. Huge love, big love. Thank you. Let's collaborate more. I agree. I totally agree. There's so much good stuff to collaborate on. And much love, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. We Thank would you love, guys. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Let us know what you're thinking. Also, Share this type of content with other people. Talk to your family, your friends online, with your coworkers about what it's like to pick up the engineering tools and software that you need to build immediately into the world and have this real-time innovative process with more people and mm -hmm. enable it with more people. Check out all of CoCreateX's links below. Also check out Simulation's links below. Support the artists and entrepreneurs and organizations you believe in around the world. Help us be able to continue coming to cool places like Boston and having great conversations with people like Mac. And go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. We love you very much. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you soon. Peace.